Thank you. So, good morning, everyone. I hope you did have a great break <laughs> from the previous session. So, we're going to tackle a quite complex topic today, IoT. It's been implemented in a lot of systems, but it hasn't really been talked about much in Joomla yet, so today I'm going to tackle it a bit. And firstly, I'd like to apply to anyone who can actually figure out that joke, just warm up a bit. Does anyone get that joke? Start with. So if you're a Linux user, you know that super user mode would be sudo, right? And if, if, you, if you're a user of platform as a service, cloud systems, you would know Heroku. So when you combine that, you get sudoku. So yeah, that's a realization. <laughs> Anyway, just to start with, about who am, who am I? But uh, firstly, I am the CEO and founder of Gray Studio, this company based on making high <coughs> devices. And I've been a Joomla coder for more than five years, I've been implementing them in my company for a long time, so it's quite an experience for me. And I'm also a contributor to the Joomla community. I'm an IoT enthusiast. I like piano, programming in different languages, watching comedy and action movies, marathons, and I also like commenting about food, so if you want to also ask me something else other than IoT, you can also ask me about what food is good, because I'm quite a food critic. <laughs> I don't like slow internet, that's one thing I don't like, and I think that everyone else here agrees with me that slow internet is really Welcome not a thing to have at this age. Sorry. Welcome to Australia then. <laughs> The only first reaction I got from Australia was actually the cold weather. <laughs> in Indonesia, it's hot all day. It's, it's really bad. It's 35 degrees Celsius. And it's only here, it's 40 degrees Celsius, so it's really something. <laughs> but, uh, so, but after the conference, if you do want to reach me, uh, you can reach me on Instagram, RenaldiGosberto is my username, or you can reach me through email, RenaldiGosberto at Yahoo.com, or Facebook as well. And that's a way to ask me questions after the conference regarding this uh, presentation and anything else you want to know because I'll be briefly going over a lot of things so I won't be able to cover something uh, especially I'm, since I'm going to be talking about Amazon Web Services for quite a length I'm not, going to, I'm not going to be able to explain everything in detail so you can ask me about that stuff after the conference as well if you want to know more about it so just a quick overview of what I'm going to do. I'm going to briefly talk about the normal protocols such as IoT, MQTT, QoS. Some of you may know it, but it's just to be able to formally introduce these topics to be able to grasp the fundamentals before we go into the, the practical that I'm going to show you later. And if you already read my talk on the website, on the Joomla Day website, I'm going to be talking about that and also the practical <coughs> that I've already prepared to show how Joomla can be implemented with IoT to really, to really merge and create a way of people being able to utilize those facilities for their own purposes such as data collection and that will be shown through Amazon Web Services as I'm going to show you later. So firstly, IoT. Kevin Ashton was the person who coined the term IoT and Probably, you can read this definition, but you would probably scream out loud because you'd probably be bored to death because you see this whole paragraph thing on the whole thing. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to basically go with a simpler definition. The Internet of Things is the internet working of physical objects embedded with electronic software, sensors, actuators, and network connectivity, which enables these objects to collect and exchange data. So that's a more simpler way of putting it. So it's basically something that we always see in our everyday life, but sometimes we don't realize that, and it's becoming more and more of a trend. Our smartphones connect to internet, refrigerators, ACs, and it's becoming a trend these days, and that's why it's essential for us to really know more about it. And I'm going to introduce the four pillars of connectivity of the IoT, hence the concept of smart. Firstly, we have SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. So it's basically a component of IoT which involves the Internet of Devices, which basically uh, the Internet of Controllers, which is basically how you are able to use distributed systems in order to 
capture data from the environment through various networks, and it's based on closed control loop theory or also smart systems. So this way, you're able to take over controllers from different parts of the world. Also, if you're going from this place or that place, you can just control it from another place that way, and you can control stuff that easier that way and receive feedback mechanism. RFID. A lot of you may be familiar with this term. It's basically the intro, basically using tags, uh, using electronic tags, and those tags have radio waves which communicate with the central server, which receives those tags and receives that radio, those radio waves to be able to track those devices and to monitor where they are. Wireless service networks. Now, this is a very big trend these days, and it's actually also part of what I do. And it's basically the internet working and the distributed systems. It's augmented autonomous distributed systems, and it is basically the trend of sensors. So, using sensors around these wireless networks allows you to capture data from your environment. And from capturing data in the environment, you're able to transmit them into a central server, which is a common trend now. Often we know the term big data here being used because all these data from sensors are interpreted into the cloud and they are used for various purposes. And we all, all also already know a lot about this. Pollution data, for example, that many people use, or temperature data. And finally, M2M. This is a big trend as well, and it's basically the internet of devices. So you're able to capture an uh, event happening in one location. For example, when your car starts to emit some dangerous fuel or gases, you're able to be alerted of something happening there. And from there, you're, you'll be able to take the necessary actions to mitigate those. And of course, the explanation will not be complete without talking about the process of the connection itself. We firstly have devices, which eventually connect to the hub. So, from the hub, we're able to then communicate with the access point. The access point can be your router, and it will continue to communicate like that from the hub, which eventually goes to what we know as the internet, or more broadly defined, the cloud. So, all the data is gathered there, and finally, it ends up in the data centers. So they are processed in data centers, and as you can see there, we are able to have a backward and forward communication as we can retrieve the data or the data can be sent to the data centers. Now, we got the whole technical stuff out of the way. Now let's go on to a bit of more Joomla stuff. Now, I'm not going to be talking wholly about Joomla. There's going to be also like shifts between the Amazon Web Services and Joomla, so it's going to be that part of the talk. And also, we're going to be looking at two devices. We're going to be looking at Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Now, who here already implements the Arduino? No one yet? Raspberry Pi? Okay, one, two, two people. That's fair. For those who haven't seen it yet, I, I didn't bring the Arduino because we're not going to be talking at that length here. I'm going to focus on the Raspberry Pi. By the way, that's not the photo, this is supposed to be a photo. And this is basically a Raspberry Pi you can see over here. It's basically one of those mini computers that you can use to program different functions. But I could also briefly talk about the comparison between using Raspberry Pi and Arduino so you can choose which one you want to use in future implementations. So, firstly, in the Raspberry Pi, you have more processes at one time versus one process at one time with the Arduino. Because if you're using the Arduino, some people only can use one process at one time. What, with the Raspberry Pi, you can be able to use many things at one time. That's the, the main advantage of that, because it's more, like a super, it's more like a computer that way. So you can choose with which one to use if you want to use, if you want to use, if you only want to control one process at one time, then go with the Arduino. But if you want to make it more complex and you want to control many more devices, use the Raspberry Pi. And it's true. Now, this is one thing that people usually say to me, but Rinaldi, isn't Raspberry Pi relatively more professional? Now, professional is a term that people use to actually describe the use of the Raspberry Pi in industrial applications. More people see the Raspberry Pi used in these kinds of applications, but I say it really depends on which one you use. 
if you want to one process, you can use the Arduino, but if you want to use more processes, the Raspberry Pi. So it's really which one to use, and it's not a matter of which one is more professional. And of course, Raspberry Pi is confined to Linux, as the people who already use it most likely know, versus the use of free platform on the Arduino. You can use it on a myriad of platforms, which is one of the main advantages of it, really. Now, there are two main things uh, I'm going to talk about in the implementation, and these are the main two things. So, firstly, as you know, the layout of the website is important in Joomla. Actually, that's the, the, what the whole thing is for. But using the IoT concept, you're able to implement it into the website onto your layout. So it's very important to know because you're able to put live data, for example, on your website and people are able to see it on your Joomla website because some people may want to see, for example, the weather or the temperature directly from the internet. You want to see live data. So that's one example that can be very important to your website. And of course, it is an intermediary for the IoT concept. So Joomla can be also used as an intermediary for uploading data to the cloud, which I will explain in my implementation. And this is, before I go to the implementation, there is one key thing to understand, the architecture of how the Amazon Web Services will work. As you can see, it's quite a complex system. You will see there are, there are many authentication methods there. You can see over there, and this is true because the Amazon Web Services, if you've never used it yet, is very complex because sometimes there are a lot of certificates and there are a lot of encryption methods that you have to pass first, and the whole list of how you can connect a device to the, your Amazon Web Services IoT module will actually be on the Amazon Web Services website itself. So I'm not going to be explaining it here, but if you want to do it, if you do have trouble with this, you can also ask me through the contact I provided you as well, or after the, this talk. And so, just going over a bit of the architecture, you can see how the applications connect using the API, and how a device shadow is produced from the application itself, uh, because you can see how a state is meant, is kept intact within the uh, like a copy of the device is kept intact, which the database can retrieve eventually. And of course, the Amazon Web Services itself, which goes through a process called the Rules Engine, which is another part of the IoT, Amazon Web Services, that is also part of the authentication process. So, like I said, it's a quite a complex process, but I'll be explaining to you also if you want to know more about it. And also, since I'm going to talk about QoS a bit, quality of service. So it's good to know about this a bit. Firstly, there's quality of service zero. Basically, it's called fire forget because it's only basically you go only one direction. You don't get any feedback from that. You don't get your, because it goes from a publisher and then there's a receiver, but the receiver won't acknowledge you saying that they already received that. So, and it's basically one disadvantage, but it can transmit the message at most one time. And also there's quality of, of service one, which is the message is delivered more than once with acknowledgement, and, but it's only delivered at least once, so it can deliver it more than once. And finally, there's QoS two. It's the safest and slowest method compared to QoS zero, which is basically the fastest method, but there are security measures that have to be taken in place and there are two flows that goes backwards and forwards from the sender and the receiver. And of course, there's, it only sends the message once only, but it gives acknowledgement when you send it. MQTT, the picture already explains the title of the slide. So basically, it's a, basically it's a simple method transfer protocol to be able to communicate one device to another, and that's for devices like Arduino, and the Raspberry Pi. And of course, there's the MQTT broker. We have, this is, this is one of the things that I'm going to also be talking about in my implementation. We have the connect, which eventually receives a connect acknowledgement from the broker. The client can subscribe, and there will be a subscribe back or a subac. And the client will can publish, and eventually the broker will 
return a published back acknowledgement. So these are all acknowledgements that we will return from each of these client connecting procedures. <coughs> and this is the last slide before the implementation. So subscription topics are basically a string that is sent out. And you can see from here uh, that this is one of the examples that I'm going to use in this implementation. From this string, you're able to connect your device with what you're already programming in the cloud itself. So, without further ado, let's get into the implementation. Let me just switch my into a duplicate so that it will be easier. Okay, you can see the full screen now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly put a subscribe, a subscribe command here, and this is going to be done through Putty. If you don't know Putty yet, it's basically a tool used to communicate with the device, and it's basically like an SSH way to be able to secure shell way to be able to communicate with your device that way. Now, I'm going to open my IP address of my Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to do this a bit. see over here that I'm basically going to the directory first. This is the directory. And I have a file called raspy test which already contains the contents of what I need to be able to retrieve those sensors. So I'm going to execute it with Python. And the code is going. So you can see over here how it is taking measurements. And in this case, I'm taking temperature and humidity measurements. As you can see at the data being collected on the command prompt. So there are two options as well if you want to use PuTTY or you want to use a VNC viewer. It's basically a virtual viewer to view your Raspberry Pi, but since we don't need to see the virtual layout of the Raspberry Pi and we only need the coding of the Raspberry Pi, we can just go to use PuTTY that way. It's much more simpler and it saves time. So, and you can see over here, the first thing I'm going to show is my subscription to our topic. And what we're going to do here is that we're going to take the topic of this one. I have the topic already embedded in my Amazon Web Services, and I'm going to subscribe to the topic, and I'm going to pick one so that I receive an acknowledgement for that. Over here, you can see it being collected, and there you go. There's one of the first measurements being taken. You can see the time being taken over there, and the other information such as the temperature, and the serial number of the Raspberry Pi, and the humidity. So that's one of the things you can do, and also you can see it. Uh, you can see over there it keeps taking over data, and it will be taking data basically every 20 seconds or so. So that's basically a good way to be able to take these measurements, and it allows you to be able to continue to take these measurements as long as the program is running. But also, there's also a method to be able to continue to take this data while also alerting you if there is. Some a measurement that goes beyond the threshold that you wanted to, and but that coding will probably be saved for another time. So you can also ask me for that coding if you do want to know more about it after this presentation. But now I'm going to go over also the tables, which is also in the, located in the Dynamo DB of Amazon Web Services. You can see over here all the data collected over time. So that was data collected when the Raspberry Pi was running. But now I'm going to collect the data at when all the data that has been collected. So you can see over here, with the, and this is, not, this, this is another Raspberry Pi for the record. So you'll be able to see this. Let me just drag this here. And 
and you'll be able to see all the data as well here. So from the table, you can see that when you create an item, you'll be able to see all the keys being implemented here. You can see all the measurements. And the funny thing about Amazon Web Services is that it takes you, you need to go to scroll to the right to actually see the latest measurements. And that's what I'm going to do here. So you just have to scroll down, and you can see over here the latest measurement. And over there you can see the details of the time taken and the certificate that it's being used, and also the other details that were taken, such as the <coughs> and the humidity, as I told you before. Finally, since we got that out of the way, Now I'm going to talk about a bit about the layout of itself on the website, and I'm going to give a bit of an example on how that is being used. And that is going to be shown through one of my Joomla websites, and this is a local Joomla website. I managed to actually create this on my Joomla website, and this is basically a mixture of a bit of uh, JavaScript and CSS programming, but it's built on Joomla, so you can see that one of the benefits it provides over here. You can see, and actually like, you can see over here the different measurements that you can take over there. So this is very imperative if you want to make, for example, a website that updates you on the weather, or a website that updates you on other factors communicating with the internet. And that way, you can be able to continue providing feedback to the people who are already subscribed to you, and that way you're able to keep retracting the data while placing it on your Joomla website. So that's one of the benefits of IoT. It can also be served as an intermediary for your template. That way, you can be able to take data easily that way. And since that's out of the way as well, <coughs> now I'm going to talk about the bit of, of the future of Juma in the world of IoT. We have since we have now, who here knows the Mirai botnet? Where has already heard of that virus? Okay, quite a number. So, for those who don't know, it was actually a nefarious virus which eventually took over the IoT network. It aimed for a lot of IoT infrastructure, it aimed for a lot of IP addresses, and that caused quite an industrial breakdown for some period of time. So, that's one thing that Juma developers need to consider while implementing IoT because there's still a lot of these concerns, and people may need to get into awareness about these kinds of issues, because I'm not going to be talking about a lot about how to use these security issues within Joomla, because I think that uh, it can be covered in our time, and there's already another talk besides me, who's talking about also about Joomla and security, as I saw today. And aside from that, we also have the problem of simplicity of coding in Joomla. Now, many people, already think that Joomla is already a simple kind of coding itself, so if there's not really much a problem with that, but that's also one factor to take into account, since there may be also future issues. Because some people, for example, say WordPress is better because it is much more compressed than Joomla, but of course it's debatable, so that's one thing to take into consideration when developing programming. And also the architecture management. So. I believe that the architecture of Joomla itself is already good, but of course there are some skeptical people who also still question that, so that's another thing they can count. And of course the use of it in data analytics. This is one big core use of Joomla these days, because you're able to show main data analytics while reporting to the IoT, as I already showed you before. You're able to retrieve that data and put it on your website through the template, it's like, such as what I've shown you before, or you can also retrieve it from Cloud services such as Amazon Web Services or let's say things speak. And of course, we can't forget that the equation of today's thinking is simple. Many people have already retrieved big data, but it leads to big revenue, eventually leading to big struggle. And that will be the main conflict of this time because a lot of people need to consider how they can utilize their big data, but Provide it in a simple way, because sometimes people don't really know the whole way of being able to manage the architecture yet, and that's one core issue here. But over time, I believe that more people will start to implement IoT. <coughs> so over time, there will be more and more 
uses of how the architecture works and how people can make the coding even safer that way as well as to make sure that it's used more effectively. Let's talk about the Juma market growth for a bit here. Now, it has a lot of potential because as you can see here, computing services, as you can see over there, is at an 8%. And we could say that Juma is part of computing services. So we have a lot of potential there in Juma itself. And that's one thing to take into account as well because that is it has a lot of potential in computing services. That's why we have there's a lot of potential of growth here. And we can take into account as well the development of the architecture, developing of the engineers. So that can be one thing to really understand here for the Joomla market growth. So there's literally a lot of potential in Joomla. And finally, what I call Joom OT maybe. It's been a well-known concept already, IoT. So there will be much more investigations led to it. There will be more, more researches. And there's a lot of industrial applications of it because most of the the usage of this is including multi-access, multi-hop wireless networks. So these wireless networks are usually more prone to mitigations as well as customer or client, I can say, or how they behave with their data. Because sometimes people may believe that sometimes the data isn't always transmitted correctly. Some people may fake the data or some people may transmit the wrong data because they because people not, not all people are always have the same good heart. Sometimes maybe they have they have the need for incentive or the need for other procedures before they want to transmit the right data. So that's one thing that we need to take into control in industrial applications. But it has a big growth as well, industrial applications. And healthcare. Same goes with that as well. It can be a good thing or a bad thing in healthcare because it can go one way or another with all the people and the, their incentives that they may need. And finally, of course, let's wrap it up with Smart Joomla. We already have a Smart City, so we can have a Smart Joomla as well. And as well as, because with Smart City, we know that more and more things are getting connected to Smart City. More and more and more things are getting connected. But as a Joomla community, I believe that we can say, let's get started with Smart Joomla, and let's get started with connecting more things to Joomla and really maintaining and utilizing Joomla as a service. And that's the end of my presentation. I'd like to thank you for listening.